Hello everyone, good morning, whether you are in Romania or in uh, Istanbul or wherever you are. Uh, I'm going today to make some videos uh, to change the classical way of um, my lectures and we will shift to making uh, videos and uh, we discuss each video uh, separately. What I'm going to do now is uh, to record some videos concerning the, um, the preparation of the patient, the positioning of the patient on the dental chair, how we prepare our patient, how we investigate the case, how we examine it um, radiographically and clinically to choose the right place for the placement of our implant. I will show you uh, how we prepare our uh, instruments one by one, what we need during the surgery, uh, how we prepare the surgical kit. I'm going to talk about the content of the the surgical kit from biotech, what are the tools that we have inside and finally I'm going to make a video for you uh, showing how we place uh, the biotech implant step by step on artificial jaw, um, uh, uh, just to show we, even with the incision of the flap, reflection of the flap and the placement of the implant in order uh, to put you on the right way of placing your first implant, whether you are going to place it in an artificial jaw or in uh, a sheep jaw. Okay, so wait for my videos. Thank you. First of all, we have to start with preparation of the patient and the positioning of the patient. In my protocol, I always do uh, scaling and polishing to the patient 24 hours before I place the implant and uh, one day later uh, we start our surgery. Uh, first of all uh, I put my patient on the chair in a comfortable position. Uh, I ask the patient to rinse uh, her or his mouth with uh, a mouthwash, antiseptic mouthwash and I would prefer betadine mouthwash just to clean the oral cavity before we start the, uh, our procedure. And then we have to cover the patient with a surgical towel, sterilized surgical towel. We have to cover the head of the patient with a, with a head cap. And I have to wear my uh, surgical uh, sterilized gloves with a face mask with, uh, with the surgical uh, towel. This is the first, thank you.
So now in this video, I am going to show you the instruments, the surgical kit that we are going to use uh, after we prepare the patient and the patient is ready for the surgery, I start to uh, prepare my kit. As you see, we have here uh, a sterilized uh, towel uh, or sometimes we use a disposable sterilized towel. The first thing that we have to prepare are the um, diagnostic instruments, including the mirror, the probe, and the tweezer. After that, we need to give the patient anesthesia. We use the dental syringe, uh, infiltration needle, always, never use long needle, block needle, and I use the septanist, uh, the four percent. Now, I never give uh, block anesthesia in case of implant surgery never in lower or upper jaw i always give infiltration anesthesia and the reason why i will explain it in uh, the next video after giving the anesthesia i start to make my incision uh, through the soft tissue uh, in case of flap technique in case of flapless technique we use another technique uh, another uh, instruments now we have the scalpel handle the scalpel blade, always we use the number 15 blade. After the incision, we uh, elevate uh, our flap by uh, periosteal elevator. Then sometimes uh, we, after elevation of the flap, we see some uh, soft tissue lesion. We need uh, some kind of curate uh, to clean the soft tissue lesion. This is a toothed tissue forceps in order to uh, catch the soft tissue lesions or the head of the flap and these are two different kinds of flap retractors that I use. Uh, the use of those it depends on how you feel comfortable or uh, the size of the flap. Then we have the needle holder, we have the scissor, we have the artery forceps, the mosquito and um, I need also a sterilized jar in case that I need to do bone augmentation to put the bone here. And as, as we see, we have it here already in the uh, premium kit of uh, biotech. Also, the suture that I use is the uh, 30 black silk suture. But my advice to you is to use 20 instead of 30 because 30, uh, 30 is very delicate and may uh, cut during the surgery. So 2-0 in case of upper teeth and 3-0 I use it when I have small size surgery or the uh, flap is very delicate. Sometimes we use nylon sutures which are better and uh, stronger but we know that the nylon sutures are uh, rotated to the uh, gums, to the cheek, to the tongue, to the lips. That's why we uh, run away from those. Also, sometimes we need a kidney dish. Uh, kidney dish. Uh, we just prepare it in case. And let me talk about the uh, biotech uh, kit. We have two kinds of kits here. The simple one and the uh, premium one. In the premium one, we see more uh, tools than the simple one. Also, we can see the ratchet of the premium one is completely different from the simple one. On both we see the words in and out. In it means that uh, clockwise in case that we want to place the implant or the screw and out it means that unscrewing the uh, implant. In the uh, premium ratchet we see that there is serrations here which determine the torque that we use and that's why it is controllable. It stops when we reach the amount of torque that we need. So you can increase it and decrease it by this uh, slice. Wire here, it is only a simple ratchet, nothing more. Also, we can see that in the uh, premium one, we have the pilot drill, which is two millimeters. The same we have it in the simple uh, kit. After the two millimeters, it comes the 2.8, while here we have the two, 2.5, and then it comes to, to the 2.8. Also, there is very uh, good 
a tool in the premium kit is the pointer or locator which is a very nice bear pointed head that I use it to just locate the entry of my future bears. This is very, very beneficial uh, bear that I don't find it in the uh, simple kit. That's why I advise always to buy the uh, premium one. Also, we have this one, this tool, which shows you the uh, location, direction, and parallelism of uh, your hole. Uh, you've just placed it in your hole and you see uh, the exact lo location of your future implant. Now, let us talk about the uh, package of um, uh, biotech implants. Normally, the package of biotech implants, it comes like this, or in a different package, whatever it is. Uh, it comes in a sterilized uh, uh, fashion, so the assistant uh, during the surgery will open it like this. Anything inside is sterilized, and she will throw the implant in your uh, hand. Now, what we have here, we have three pieces. We just open it like this, we place the implant, and then we remove this part. This part, we cannot throw the implant, uh, thread it inside the bone because it may break down. So we just place the implant, two, three threads, and then we remove it, and we use the uh, driver for the implant, which we have it in short one, and long one. Then uh, we have this piece, it comes inside the implant itself and we have something else here which is the cover screw. The cover screw that we remove it by the screwdriver and we screw it over the implant after finishing the placement of the implant inside the bone. So this is the package of the uh, biotech implants. Also we, he we see here there is a sticker, two stickers. Those stickers, they, show, they showed biotech implant, okay? It shows the system that we use, which is the SPR. It shows also the size of the implant, the diameter 3.75. It shows the length of the implant, which is uh, 13 millimeters. And it shows you the uh, sterilization, the approval of the implant. So you can use it as a, uh, to stick it on the file of the patient and as a referee uh, for future, even if the patient, he goes to another dentist, he can use just this to know the whole details of our implants. Uh, I think that that's enough our, uh, for, um, uh, for the surgical kit that we use. Uh, also, I am going to make a separate video talking about each uh, tool or each bear or each uh, content of uh, the surgical kits. Uh, now I want to show you the surgical motor that I use. I use the NSK, whatever the surgical motor that you use, uh, there is no problem. Just to show you the concept, we connect the surgical motor with the saline here and the irrigation tube here. Of course, I'm not going to use the saline or the irrigation tube because I'm going to work on um, a dummy or artificial jaw. But in, in the case of a patient, we need to put the saline here and the uh, irrigation tube and connect it with the handpiece. The speed that I use is 500 RPM for the initial entry. Uh, with torque of 15 newtons, of course with water irrigation. You see here, this is the water irrigation. I put it almost in the uh, center of the uh, irrigation. Now, after connecting the cord of the surgical motor, we move, we move here. I connect the um, uh, implants or the surgical angled handpiece to the cord of the surgical motor and uh, we are going to place an implant here in an artificial jaw. I will try my best to show you that uh, because you know this is artificial it's not like the patient mouth but I will uh, do my best to show you uh, the principles of uh, placing an implant. First of all after <clears throat> giving anesthesia to the patient we need to do our uh, incision. 
uh, we are going to place one implant here. The implant has to be in the middle of the distance between the two teeth. Suppose that this is uh, lower uh, four, and this is the lower six, and the missing is lower five. So always you leave 1.5 millimeter from the distal part of the uh, four and 1.5 millimeters uh, from the mesial part of the six and you place it in the middle. So this is, let's say here is the future <clears throat> place for our implant. Always place your implant <clears throat> in a parallel position to the roots of the other teeth and this can be localized or uh, determined by the uh, x-rays, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is to make a three-sided small flap to place my implant. This is the midline or the alveolar uh, crest line. I always place my horizontal incision just one millimeter or 1.5 millimeter away from the crest of the ridge. Why? Because I want to place the suture line away from the implant. I don't want to make the suture line just exactly above the implant. And also this will gives you a better vision. So the first incision is here, as you see, between the four and the six. And then I start another incision just around the six and another incision just around the four and I go down to the middle of the alveolar ridge. I think now uh, my, my incision is ready and I want you to excuse me because this is not a real gum. So it is a silicone. I try to do my best here. Uh, list, yes. And we do uh, of course, I can't use the flap retractor because it's bigger. So I show you the area in which I am going to place the implant. And in this, we can see that the future position of my implant is here. So with the placement of the uh, horizontal incision just away from the crest of the ridge, this gives me better visibility to the crest of the ridge and also the future suture line will be here in this area just away from the implant so that if i use bone augmentation or a membrane it will not be exactly under the suture line so will be away from uh, contamination and infection now um, after we expose the flap, we will start to make our, uh, our drilling procedure. The first step, I use the locator. It's a very beneficial uh, bear. You can see it. It is straight, rectangular, uh, tetrangular, and pointed. This bear, uh, it's going just to locate our future uh, hole in the jaw. So after I fix it, I will <clears throat> just determine the future of my implant. Always put in your mind that your hand has to be straight, not mobile, left or right, or up and down, and always be in a parallel position to the uh, roots of the laboring teeth. So I determined my point of entry here and I will start my first entry here. I go inside like five millimeters, which are enough. So this is the first point that uh, it shows the location of my future implant, okay? Now, if you want to change this position, if you feel that uh, this was not a good position, you can change it because this is only a locator. For example, if I think that it is little buckly, that's why I made it little buckly, I can change my position or my entry to a little bit uh, palatally, okay? So I can place the future uh, uh, hole here. Now, 
After that, I want to show you the trays, the surgical kits of Biotech. Biotech, they have three surgical kits. They have the simple one, the premium one, and the prosthetic one, which I don't need it. I don't use it. But with the simple one and the premium one, we have everything you need. The simple one consists of simple things, the ratchet, five drills only, and uh, the uh, screwdriver. While with the uh, prosthetic one, we have extra things, and even the ratchet is different from the, uh, the simple one. This ratchet is more uh, advanced, and we can determine, determine here the amount of torque that we need. You see the slice here, it shows you the amount of torque that we can use here. Okay, by decreasing the torque or increasing the torque, the torque. And this determine the torque power that we are going to apply on the implant. While the simple one is easy one. It has nothing, just we see in and out. In, it means that the face that it has to face up in, uh, when we place the implant, it is the clockwise and the out is anti-clockwise if we want to remove a screw or the implant. So I will start with the advanced one, advanced ratchet, okay? And I will start with the pilot drill, which is two millimeters, the white one. And we can see it here also in this tray. It is the same drill, the two millimeters. So I place it here. For example, we decided <clears throat> after the study of the model, the study of the X-ray, we decided to place <clears throat> uh, 13, a 3.75 millimeter, uh, a 3.75 by 13 millimeters biotech implant. Okay, so this implant, after the study of the case, we saw that this is the best or the, the exact implant that we are going to use for this case. So now I will show you how we are going to uh, place this implant. First of all, I need to expand now to make the hole to receive the future implant. I start with one straight line and I go inside 13 millimeters, exactly. But just to give you one thing, when you go inside, listen to me, when you reach 13 millimeters, do not stop and pull the handpiece up, no. Continue drilling and pulling your hand. What we see here on the bear, we see bone. If, of course, you see the bone here, the chips of bone. This bone, it's a natural autogenous bone that you can, you see the bone here, that you can use it for bone augmentation if you need bone. So collect this bone. Now, we started with the uh, two millimeters, we went 13 millimeters, but as advice, I saw from my experience that the best thing to do with biotech implants is to place it 0.5 to one millimeter below the bone level to get the best results. And I will explain to you later why. Now we change the bear, we put it in its place, and we change the bear to, to the yellow one, which is the 2.5. Of course, if you see in the simple kit, we have from, from two millimeters, we go to 2.8. While in the premium uh, surgical kit, we are, moving from two millimeters to 2.5 millimeters. So I'm going to do the same procedure here. I will go inside 13.5 millimeters with them. You see, just one move with them, 2.5. 
Now I will let I will tell you my trick with biotech implants. If you are working in the upper jaw and you want to put 3.75 millimeters, I always stop drilling one millimeter before the size of the uh, implant for the last, I mean the apical part of the implant. I will explain to you how. Now my implant is a 375. 3.75 millimeters diameter. If we look at the surface of the implant, we see that I will open the implant now. And please forgive me because we need to use a, a surgical a sterilized procedure, but because it's a dummy, I want to show you the implant. We see that the 3.75, it's on the coronal part or the cervical part of the implant, while here, it is only 2 or 2.5 millimeters. So what I need, I don't need to enlarge the whole circuit to 3.75 because with this, we are going to lose the primary stability of the implant. So what I'm going to do now, I enlarged the whole socket 2.5. Then I stopped. I will not enlarge the whole socket again. I will go to 2.8, which is exactly one millimeter less than the diameter of the implant and I will go inside, our drill was 13 millimeters, I will go inside only six millimeters. Okay, now the first six millimeters are 2.5. Is that clear? I want to clean the socket. Yeah. The socket is clean now, so you got my idea. The 13 millimeters, the full length of the implant was drilled till 2.5 millimeter. Now, the 2.8, with the 2.8 drill, I just drilled seven millimeters, which is like half of the uh, length of the implant, which is 13 millimeters. Now, I will try, first of all, as you so the implant it comes like this i take the implant the nurse it, she's she open the implant without touching it and the implant falls in my hand what i need to do is just to pull the implant out keep this because it has the cover screw inside then we place our implant just to catch the first drills the first threads of the implant inside. Okay, by your finger, use your finger. And then I prefer always to use the uh, ratchet rather than the uh, surgical uh, handpiece. Now, you got my idea why I place the horizontal incision away from the crest. You see here, because I wanted this area free so I can place my implant without touching this, the gum. While if I put it exactly in the crest of the alveolar bone, then this, the implant threads would touch the gum and it reducing uh, an epithelial cells inside the socket, which may lead to failure. Now I will start to, to place my implant inside the bone. And you see the implant going very smoothly inside. Try to keep the soft tissue flap away from the implant without touching the implant. Now my implant is exactly inside the bone, as you see, and there is still one, less than one millimeter out. We need to change this and we need to use the other adapter, this one, and we fix it to the ratchet and we start introducing our implant more inside the bone till we reach like half millimeter or one millimeter just below the level of the implant. And now we finished with the exact 
position of our implant, as we said, half millimeter or one millimeter below the level of the bone, and uh, just parallel in the mid middle uh, distance exactly between the uh, two teeth, neighboring teeth. Now what I'm going to do is, this is the screwdriver, I'm going to take the cover screw, place it here over the implant, sorry, this is the cover screw, I place it here over the implant, screw it well, don't leave it loose, and done. You finished, and you return back the uh, flap in its place, and as you see, the location of the implant and the incision line. So it is away from the incision line. The sutures will not be exactly over the implant. The implant is here and the sutures will be here. What we need here, one, two sutures and one, two sutures and that's all. This was simply the, uh, how we place a biotic implant in the jaw. Now I'm going to show you another video showing how to place it in another jaw, in another location, but without gum this time, okay? Now let's move to the second video. Now I will try to show you how to place a biotech implant. Again, we will use the same implant, which is the uh, uh, 3.75 by 13 millimeters. I choose the weakest area in the jaw, which is here in the area of lateral incisor. And again, I will show you how to place it in the weakest area here, for example, just for demonstration. Now in this area, suppose that this is the missing tooth and we want to place our implant. We choose, we took x-rays and we decided to place this size of the implant. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to place my locator, the pointed bear here, and take in your mind that the jaw, the lower jaw in the anterior part is going like this. It's not straight down, okay? It is not straight, it is like this. So the direction is not straight. The direction will be like this. Because if you see from here, the jaw is not going down exactly, it is going forward. So my implant, the direction of my implant will be like this. Always my advice is to put your two fingers here because these are the best indicator, the best sensors for your future drill in order and also a protector to feel if you do any perforation in the uh, labial or the lingual plate of the implant. So imagine like this, I'm going to drill now my just pointer. I'm going to go like seven or five millimeters inside and that's all. Now you see that the initial hole of the implant and you see the hole in which determine the future position of the implant. Now I remove this bear, I use the pilot bear which is two millimeters and I go exactly as we said, the length of the implant is 13 millimeters, so I will go like 14 millimeters inside. So I will start with the 50 Newton RPM. You see the extra bone coming out? This bone, I can use it again. I'm going now 14 millimeters exactly. So as we said, we will go through with the uh, two millimeters pilot bear and we start with five R 500 RPM and 15 Newtons and we go inside for 14 millimeter, just one millimeter and you see, I go inside and outside while the, the drill is working. You see all this bone coming out, you see it here? 
This bone, I can collect it, even this bone on the bear. I can collect it and use it for bone augmentation if we need any bone. And this is the best bone that we can collect because it is autogenous bone. Now, I have uh, a hole diameter, two millimeters, length 14 millimeters. Now I want to check how is my hole? It is straight or angled? I use this device so to see my implant if it is going uh, mesially or distally. Okay, and also to see if it is going buccally, labially, sorry, or lingually. Okay, this is the exact position of my future implant. Now, uh, I will use, uh, just to show you, I will use the simple kit to show you that with the simple kit we can do many things. So we started with the two millimeters, the pilot. I will go to the 2.8 implant uh, drill now. And as I told you before, the diameter of this implant, I will show you now, the 3.75 is 3.75 here in the neck, <clears throat> while in the apical area is not no more than 2.5 millimeters. So I want the apical part to be 2.5 or less and the uh, coronal part to be one millimeter just less than the diameter of the implant. So with the 2.8, I'm going to drill just seven or eight millimeters. That's all, okay? Now, it looks like I have a shoulder inside. Till here, it is uh, two millimeters, and till here, it's 2.8. So I'm going to, just to place my implant, catching the threads. Is that clear? Because I said the opening of the hole is 2.8 and the diameter of the apical part of the implant is not more than 2.5 or a little bit more. So the, my implant cached like three millimeters inside. I remove this part, then I bring the other device, which we have the long one, or we have the short one. And I think we have, no. So I will use the short one here. And I use the uh, normal, the simple uh, ratchet. And I start to place the implant till I introduce the hole length of the implant inside the bone. I feel now the resistance, which is very good for the primary stability. Now, if you see the implant is going inside the bone, and you see here, Then I reached exactly half millimeter below the level of the bone. Then I place my uh, cover screw over the implant and uh, finish the whole story, which is very easy, simple. You see the level of the implant? It is like 0.5 millimeter or one millimeter below the level of the bone located in the middle of the alveolar bone and it was parallel to the roots of the other teeth as I showed you. Um, in the premium kit you can find a bear which is a very nice locator pointed ends just to uh, determine the primary uh, point of entry. Imagine that we have two teeth here and we are going to place one implant in this area. 
Of course, there is one important point. You can see here, like the bone is not in the same thickness as it is in the uh, lower part of the mandible, which is very thin here. So I need to locate my implant in an oblique direction going inside the bone. So it has to be little bit tilted lingually and going buccally. Is that clear? So the first thing that I'm going to use to place the biotech implant is to use the pointed or the pointer or the locator, whatever you uh, call it. And we do our uh, primary. You see the direction of my hand? It is not straight like this. It is a little bit uh, directed uh, lingually. The, the hand piece directed and the bear directed more labially. So I start exactly in the middle of the, in the uh, mid distance between the two teeth, neighboring teeth, and in the middle space, uh, middle area between the buccal and lingual of the alveolar ridge. I just go inside like a few millimeters and that's all. I don't need this there for further work. Now, I will show you how to use the simple uh, surgical cut, uh, surgical kit. I will use, now I will shift to the two millimeters uh, pilot drill and I will go inside like 13 millimeters because my implant is 3.75 by 13. I will go one millimeter extra and imagine if we don't have a vital structure here because we have the lower jaw here. It's just for demonstration, for teaching. But in uh, this area, it's impossible to use 13 millimeters implant be because of the alveolar nerve. Uh, inferior alveolar nerve. So I go inside, very straight, one touch for 14 millimeters, the drilling, and then while drilling, I go outside. You see, it's very nice. Look at the bone that I collect from my work and look at the bone that I can use it later on if I need bone augmentation. Now we have a hole of two millimeters thickness uh, diameter and 14 millimeters length. And we see we don't have perforation here. Now what I am going to do is to shift from two millimeters diameter bare to 2.8. As I said, in the premium, you have the 2.5. So I will move to the 2.8 and I am going to drill only the first seven millimeters with 2.8 and I will keep that one for two millimeters. Why? Because the implant is self-threading and the apical part of the implant is uh, smaller in diameter than the cervical part of the implant. So I go only seven millimeters with the 2.8 so i have like an edge the the implant the hole it comes like this shoulder inside i take my implant and sorry because we used this implant before and i just tried to introduce it inside the hole just to catch few threads then it's very easy to control it. You can see how the implant is uh, parallel, okay, to the other implants. You see here, sorry. Now, I will use the simple ratchet. I remove this first, this part, and then I use the drill 
uh, sorry, the driver for the implant. And slowly I go inside, I can feel the resistance when the apical part of the implant start to catching the part that I reached with only two millimeters diameter. Yeah, I can feel it. And always, always, as I told you, keep your fingers here to see. And if it is a patient mouth, keep your fingers here to feel if there is any perforation of the bone. And also as a guide. Now the implant is exactly, you can feel the resistance. The implant is exactly half millimeter or one millimeter, something between that. Uh, below the bone level, I bring the uh, cover screw and I place it over the implant and that's all. Then I suture it. Now, let's see here. Do I have any perforation here? Okay, so this shows you the trick how to incline your implant, I mean, not to place it vertical. If we would place it vertical, then we would see the implant coming from here. But we did it in a vertical way, not in uh, a horizontal, or uh, uh, not in a, uh, a straight way, okay? Little bit oblique. And that's all. Thank you. Okay, now after we saw all those uh, videos, uh, you saw how we place the patient on the chair, how we prepare the patient uh, on the chair, what are the um, investigations, uh, tools that we use in order to uh, choose the right place of our implant. Then we saw uh, how we prepare our instruments, what are our instruments, and we have an idea now about the surgical kit of biotech. And I showed you some videos about the placement of uh, biotech implant in the job. I think we are ready now to place some implants in artificial jaw or um, a sheep jaw, uh, which will be the first step during your way in dental implantology. Now I want you to prepare your uh, questions and we start to discuss what we uh, saw before. Okay, thank you.